Welcome to the Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. Hello, this is Thomas Hubert, Digital Editor with the Irish Farmers Journal, joining you from the National Ploughing Championships in Tullamore, County Offaly. There's still a very strong crowd here. It's Wednesday evening, quite late, and we had heavy rain in the afternoon, but visitors not deterred, still visiting all the stands here, and it's the second day of a very strong attendance at the ploughing. One of the visitors here was Minister for Agriculture, Michael Creed, and he told our news correspondent, Odile Evans, that the 11 million euro coming from the EU in aid would not be only for dairy farmers this time with the crisis hitting especially the tillage sector. He also hinted that there could be tax options in the next budget for those farmers affected by income difficulties. It's been a difficult year and indeed a difficult number of years for the tillage sector and we need to make sure that we have a tillage sector because it's a critical component of the Irish agri-food industry. We have a lot of opportunities in the brewing, distillery, the bovine uh, ruminants industry. Obviously, given three, four bad harvests, and, and on the other side of that, then you've had global record harvests. This is sector now that I'm very conscious it's teetering on the edge. Mm. So what I wanted to do when I gave a commitment to Liam Dunn, the IFA grain chairman, that I would convene post-harvest a, a round table with all of the relevant stakeholders to see what we can do. I mean. I'm not coming to the round table with uh, the panacea for all their ills and in many respects it's a very difficult area because around the Council of Agriculture Minister's table there's nobody standing up and jumping up and down about the tillage side, unlike to say for example there was on the dairy side and when there is that cumulative level of action at a Council of Agriculture Minister's you get the consequent packages that we've got in terms of you know, the 500 million euro June, July package. But unfortunately, in the tillage side, there isn't that consensus, you know, from the big grain growing nations, France, Hungary, they're not jumping up and down. So that makes it very difficult because we're then constrained by state aid rules and we're specifically in the context even of the 500 million euro tillage is excluded from it. Now, we have some scope around the de minimis flexibilities to do something, uh, but I'm anxious to explore with the industry and to hear what, they, what they're anxious about. Yeah. We'll try and engineer something that we can you know, positive out of this, but it is a difficult area. And in terms of those aid packages, there's 11 million in conditional adjustment aid. Will that be co-funded and will it go to the other livestock sectors or just dairy? Well, it's not exclusively this time for dairy. No. Um, you can take it that it won't be going exclusively to dairy on that basis. On the issue of co-funding, we're still working on that. Um, and I hope to be in a position to bring some clarity to that shortly. Um, I'm very conscious of the precedent that's there. You're listening to the Irish Farmers Journal podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. President Michael D. Higgins opened the ploughing on Tuesday and he told the media ahead of his speech that keeping rural Ireland alive was of vital importance to our society. I think what farmers want is a steer on the market, but I think you are right, it is a very difficult time. It's difficult in relation to what has happened in relation to price. It has been a a very, very hard period of weather for some farmers. And then I think as well, there are aspects of income support that that need attention. I will, I think, want to emphasise in in what I have to say in the speech, the importance of farm families. Right across Europe, the number of farm families is on the decrease. Yes, holdings are increasing. At the same time, there is something that has to be managed and planned, and that is achieving a balance between the environmental standards. Obviously, sustainability is very important, but you have to extract that from the market internationally that may not privilege quality and may not privilege sustainability. The more people who know about what is involved in farming, the more people who know as well that an integrated approach to the economy means that you have to take rural Ireland into account is very important. If you are to achieve to we all the old issues are still there. I will be referring to some of the new initiatives such as land sharing, which address issues of succession. But you still have the aging problem and you still have issues as well of movement from rural areas into the, the, into urban fringes. I believe very strongly that farming is part of a rural way of life that is in itself very important, not just in relation to what was happening in the soils, but 
people who sat and told the related activities, the forms of rural industry, all the different crafts. There's nothing nostalgic about this. It's a matter of getting the balances right. And I'm very, very convinced that sustainability is the only way forward. And it is capable of being achieved. But it is about sustaining communities as well as sustaining certain edge rules. So therefore, what you need is a very integrated approach that will achieve these kind of balances. The sheep shearing world record holder Ivan Scott shared a sheep in front of President Higgins. But the Donegal man said the pressure didn't quite compare to breaking the world record. It was um, a bit of an experience. Yeah. More pressure than breaking the world record? Uh, no way. No, there was no pressure on, so I could take my time and relax. Yeah. Are you looking forward to the World Shearing Championships? I am, yes. I've had a, quite a busy summer, so I'm just getting over that first, and in the new year we'll train for the World Champs again. And what's your plan for the three days here at the Plowing? Just have a bit of a look around today and meet a few people, and tomorrow I'll be back for the shearing competitions. So. We hope that you're enjoying that you're this enjoying Irish, Farmers, Irish Journal Farmers, Farmers Journal podcast. Brought to you by, to you by the, the whole of Irish, Irish Dairy. Find, Find out more at, Farmers at Farmers Journal. Farmers Journal. Journal. Ie. Also at the ploughing, Garda Commissioner Noreen O'Sullivan spoke of the increasing Garda numbers in rural communities and how to protect your home and farm from crime. I think today is a wonderful day at the ploughing. It's, it's a great family day and I suppose when I go around and I talk to people, the great recognition of the work that on Garda Chicana is doing and it's very important for us to hear it's happening in the community is the right thing and particularly with rural communities and farming families that it's important that the relationship that we have is there to reassure in the first place. It's also good to hear that people are seeing the new Gardaí who have come and are coming through Templemore to know that they're out in the community and that they're working hard at engaging with the rural community and to hear from the people here uh, from right around the country that they're actually seeing more Gardaí out there that the checkpoints are making a difference in working together and particularly with the IFA and Mokrina Firma with the text alert scheme and also with the property marking scheme. And another good thing that I'd like to uh, get across to particularly rural dwellers is the fact that on Thursday we're launching our, our property recovery campaign. So we have a lot of personal items of property including farm machinery, jewellery and personal items that we haven't been able to reunite with our owners. So if everybody gets on the Garda Twitter page and Garda.ie, they'll see where the local Garda station has the property on display, because what we really want to do is reunite the property with its owners. And how successful would you say Operation Core has been in tackling rural crime? What we're seeing is a huge success right around the country. The statistics would show that crime, property crime in particular, is way down. Burglaries are down over 35%, which is significant. But nevertheless, there are still people who are victims of burglary. So part of our focus here at Estan today is on our lock up and light up campaign making sure that we encourage people to make their homes safer and more secure working with Angarda Chicana and particularly the local Gardaí at our stand here today the local crime prevention officers are giving out packs which will just make people more aware of things that we can do and just as an example like st again statistics would show that a lot of people a lot of burglars in particular are opportunistic so it could be an open door it could be an open window so just for people to remember to lock up and light up Staying on the topic of rural crime, I met the IFA Crime Prevention Executive Colin Connolly. He told me about the online checklist to help farmer assess and fix security risks on the farms made available by the IFA. What we've launched today is our Theft Stop security checkup and what we're asking people to do is have a look at theftstop.ie or the IFA homepage. Go on and have a look for our checkup and the checklist. And what we're asking people to do with it is very much to start thinking about their home security, their farm security and their property. And on the website there are options such as your home, your livestock, your land and vehicles and outhouses and sheds. Simple questions will be presented to the user. They will answer either yes or no on those questions and with each answer that they provide a small bit of advice is given to them on their crime prevention. At the end of the survey or the questionnaire they're given a, a score a resulting score out of 100% and it kind of gives the person an indication of whether there are areas that can improve their home security or indeed if they're doing fantastically well and their property is very well secured. Maybe could you give us an example of uh, one of the questions and uh, how the answer is, is given and how it can help a farmer? Yeah I suppose the, the first one if we, if we take a section from it and we could take uh, vehicles for example and that, that would relate to tractors, trailers, quads, anything. It will prompt us with a question so the first question we will get in relation to vehicles do all your vehicles have a key? So on that I'm going to select yes most all my vehicles have a key. It will then tell me about that to create a safe storage for keys and spare keys such as a secure cabinet. So 
one thing that's coming back to me right across the country are people leaving keys in quads in shed so make sure you're removing the keys make sure you're taking them into the house and if you're not taking them into the house make sure there's a secure location on the farm that only you or farm workers are aware of at that point then we'll go on to another question are vehicles left in fields or out in open overnight another thing especially at harvest time of year there is a tendency for some people to just park up machinery out of necessity really but if you are forced to park a machine or some item in a field overnight just please ensure that it's as secure as you can make it ideally we want people to bring them in lock them in a, a locked shed where it's alarmed and where property is recovered that just gives you a flavor of some of the questions we're being asked and uh, the way i'm looking at it with you it's very simple uh, no need to you know go around the farm as you're doing it's some things you have in your head but it's just helping you focus and uh, it, it won't take you hours to go through it it's it's easy and helpful for someone to use yeah not at all this uh, is specifically designed to be very user friendly you can it's mobile enabled so you can work it on your smartphone as well and it's kind of a, a tea time or an evening exercise when you're sitting down in the evening just something to have a look at or, or if you have a spare minute during the day which some farmers they may have or they may not depending on the time of year the irish farmers journal weekly podcast brought to you by Ornua, the home of irish dairy Meanwhile, the Tesco Taste Festival is on in Belfast and our Northern Ireland news correspondent Peter McCanns spoke with Tesco Northern Ireland marketing manager Quiva Mannion about consumer preferences for local produce. We sell a lot of local products in Tesco and sometimes in a big store it's hard to see them all. So what we do every year in September is we join as many local producers as possible to show off the range of local products there is and what good quality they are and to let people sample and buy them. Local products, is that what consumers are interested in or is it a case of cheapest or are consumers after Northern Ireland produce? Um, I know for a fact that they are because every quarter I conduct research about things like would a retailer's range of local produce actually influence where you shop and most definitely it does and even even more so for customers of Tesco because we try to make such a big deal of it. So at this event you'll get something like 25,000 members of the public going through. So like the suppliers here will tell you they don't normally get that kind of access. And if the result of that is that all these people when they go shopping think, can I buy a Northern Ireland alternative? If that increases demand for local produce, then that has benefits the whole way back to the farm. When Tesco arrived here, which is almost 20 years ago, Tesco bought £50 million worth per annum from Northern Ireland producers. It's over £518 million pounds so over half a billion pounds now tenfold so we place a high importance on it um, with local beef and um, Hilton pack our beef but um, foil food group in Campsie is the processor right. so 100 percent of the beef that we sell in Northern Ireland stores comes from a couple of thousand Northern Ireland beef farmers then you go on to pork it's the same I think it's 148 pork farmers supply our pork fresh pork through Carrow in Cookstown all the fresh chicken we sell here comes through Moy Park and it's all grown here um, and processed at Moy Park all Tesco brand eggs come from eggs so they sell Tesco brand all our milk all the Tesco brand milk in store comes from the cooperative that forms Dale Farm you know plus all the other departments in addition we have Primacy Meats so they have a family run business at Newton Arts we now have 11 meat counters in our stores that are run by Primacy so real butchers for our customers you know so when we hear butchers sometimes saying about how you know it's difficult to compete with the supermarket we have found a solution here because they get access to our customers and our customers get real butchers you're listening to the Irish Farmers Journal podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. Irish Farmers Journal Tillage editor Andy Doyle caught up with Tony McEwen, the managing director of Doe Agrosciences for Ireland and the UK. The company has plans to bring out three new streams of chemistry to help tillage farmers in the next few years. Over the next three years, Dow Agrosciences will have three new chemistries, entirely new classes of chemistry in all ranges and all crops. And that's a brand new broadleaf weed herbicide. It's a new insecticide and a new fungicide. So not just one new product in each category, but brand new classes of chemistry with a whole suite and range of products to go with it. And what's most exciting is our RLX Active, which will be a key tool for, for growers and cereals to manage broadleaf weed. And that'll come in 2017 to the Irish market. And we will even have a brand new sap feeding insecticide, which will help cereal growers who might have BYDV resistance, pyrethroids. And we actually, Andy, hope to get that registered by the end of this year for growers for the 2017 season. So we're not just talking about one or two products, but a whole range and a whole pipeline of chemistry, which will suit the Irish market as well as the UK, but particularly at a time where we're seeing the loss of actives across Europe due to increasing regulatory pressures and the lack of investment. 
So, Tony, you're saying that the chemistry that you're bringing to the market will be fitting into our major worries at the moment, which will be ALS resistance in the sulfonyl ureas for broadleaf weeds. We also have grave concerns on some of the grass weeds, but you're not in the grass weed market with this particular set of chemistry. And we have really big concerns as well about our ability to control aphids because of a continuously increasing and expanding issue with pyrethroid resistance. So it's it's all good news. Absolutely. And we feel uh, fortunate to have uh, a presence in Ireland today and a relationship with the market and, and knowledge and, and understanding of the growers' needs to be able to bring those those new offerings in such a way in programs and solutions that really address those, those concerns, which are, are quite significant. Well, Tony, it must be two decades ago since anybody from a chemical company has got up in front of an agricultural audience and said that there's a whole new string of chemistry coming. This is and will be very welcome news for farmers. We hope that you're enjoying this Irish Farmers Journal podcast brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. Find out more at farmersjournal.ie. Finally, we go back to the ploughing to hear from Eddie Lynch, Eddie and his family won the overall 2016 FBD Farmyard Awards and he spoke with Catherine O'Leary. We love farming. We have invested heavily because it's what we want to do for the rest of our lives. We run a pedigree limousine herd which runs subsequent to our embryo transfer business but yet all is run consecutively together. We're family run business, myself, my wife and my three kids which we're all pretty much heavily involved in it and it's uh, an honour to accept this award. I think one of the things that also struck us was how even though the, the children are very young, Ben already has his own little enterprise on the farm and remind me the name of the sheep Eddie. Zorbles. But Ben fed the sheep for us and you could already see the passion that Ben had for the sheep and the feeding of them and so on. Tell us a bit about your sheep. We run just a hundred yoke commercial enterprise which pretty much we just started into sheep to keep our land tidy and keep the land the way we like it looking and has a sort of grown a little bit more into a business more than just something to look at and Ben then runs his own small Zorbel flock on a side from that which keeps him out of trouble. I think what made the winning farm was actually the overall excellence. It had this feeling of being a step above the rest. It was just exceptional. The level of hygiene and cleanliness is amazing. I know that that comes a bit from the embryo transplant business because you have to have everything excellent. I found it really interesting, just the actual transplant business where you're putting in the embryo and just the facilities that you have for holding the animals and the heater and that. The main principle of our home yard is we take in donor cows from farmers around the country and we super ovulate them and recover embryos for them on their behalf. Pretty much what we have is we have one individual building and within that building we have holding facilities and we have an embryo manipulation facility as well. So within the handling facilities we can handle three donor cows at one time for flushing and we can also handle six surrogate mothers recipients at the one time for transfer as well. And then within the same building we have our labs, our embryo storage and our sterilising facilities with our office as well within the same building. And, and it's lovely to see a young couple with a very young family doing so well.
The Irish Farmers Journal podcast, online at farmersjournal.ie, on the Irish Farmers Journal app, and on iTunes, every Thursday. Brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy.